Hey everybody, this is Captain Sandbar. Well, this past weekend I went sailing on Seahawk across Tampa Bay to a place called Little Harbor. Had a great time with my friends. I had Seahawk flying. All the sails trimmed real good. She was hauling butt. But only thing is I forgot to make a video for you guys. Because, you know, we get tired of working and looking at the ant land anchor. We want to see some real sailing. So... Over the weekend, this coming weekend, I'll make sure I get a video out to you guys of me sailing. Anyway, I'm back working on the land anchor, and I did not, as you see, I've not finished up the wall cabinets because I'm having to do some additional wiring. The wiring for an outlet that's over the counter here is inside this wall, and I could not put the cabinets in until I got that run. So I'm running a new wire, as you can see. It's a 12 gauge wire, it's yellow. 12 gauge wire in, inside, in, in indoor wiring is, is uh, colored yellow, okay? And it's called that, it's 12 2. It has, it has a, a, a black which is hot and a white is neutral and then the ground which is, does not have a shield on it. Now, in 1965 to about 71, 72, they got the bright idea of wiring houses with aluminum wiring. Now, why did they do that? Well, copper was not easy to get during the wartime. Now, that, that's Vietnam War. Some of you never been, weren't even born yet, but don't worry about it. So they wired houses with aluminum. Now, the problem with aluminum, it's not as good of a conductor as copper. Copper is a superior conductor. And you notice you don't have to use as heavy gauge. This is still 12 gauge copper. Now, the thing with 12 gauge copper is you can drive at least 20 amps with it. 14 gauge is only 15 amps. So when you rewire a house and you're gonna do the kitchen, use 12 gauge, make it a 20 amp circuit because you got toasters, ovens, you got uh, microwaves, you got things that use a little more power than the rest of the house. Also, if you're going to wire the garage, use a 12 amp, 20 amp circuit. That's not 12 amp, 12 gauge, 20 amp circuit. Let's get that right. Okay. So now I have a stove down here. The stove runs on 220 amps. See, that's what that plug looks, it plugs right in here. Let me tell you something about 220. 220 can kill you. Okay, so make sure you shut it off at the breaker. Don't be messing around with 220. I mean, 110, normal outlets can kill you, but 220, that'll knock you across the kitchen. Bang your head against the far wall, you go, what happened? That's if you're lucky. So anyway, once again, 12 gauge, 2, 12, 2 with a ground is a good for 20 amps of power. A 14, 2 wire is a little smaller. It's good for 15 amps, okay? Now, another thing I want to explain. A 20 amp receptacle looks like this. See that little side, side piece right there? That signifies it's good for 20 amps. Now, if you're going to wire your kitchen with a 20 amp circuit, make sure you use these kind of receptacles. That indicates it's a 20 amp circuit. Many people don't do it. They just use a regular 15 amp, and the 15 amp is not built to, heavy, to handle the higher current. So don't chintz out, get the right receptacle. Let's see, so once I wire this, I can start putting the cabinets in. Now what I'm having to do is, it's really hard to route new wire because it's, it's stapled with, with staples when they first do the original wiring. So I'm gonna have to feed things through, use a wood bit, and sooner or later, if all goes well, I'm gonna be able to get the wire to this box. And then once that is all in and laid in, then I can start putting the cabinets in. Well, I hope that helped people that it maybe need to do some wiring, understanding the difference between wiring. And anyway, take care and have a good day, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye!